Hi everyone, welcome back to Kristen's Epic Adventures. Today we're going to go over another one of the new races that's been introduced in the Humblewood campaign. So make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you know when our new videos are posted. And if you found this content helpful, go ahead and help us out and hit that like button so more friends can find us. Thanks for joining us everyone. Today we're going to go over the Luma race from the Humblewood campaign. Now you may remember I mentioned the Humblewood campaign is a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition compatible campaign setting. It's put out by Deck of Many. They ran a Kickstarter for it when it first came out, but you can purchase it now if you want to run this campaign. It is full of cute little woodland creatures and everybody you play in this is either like a little bird folk or a humble folk, which you'll see as things like little raccoons and foxes and stuff. It's super cute. Anyway, today I thought we would go over the Luma race. Now, a Luma is the race that resembles doves or pigeons. They are often shunned and celebrated for their eccentricities, the handbook said but they also seem perpetually disorganized and distracted. Um, they do tend towards chaotic good, and that's probably where the chaotic part comes in, the eccentricities and the disorganized and distracted. Now, it said they seem that way, but it's not necessarily true. It's just maybe how they're perceived. Um, they are on the smaller side, just resembling doves or pigeons, and it said they may have feathers that shine, possibly even with iridescent colors, so that sounds pretty cool. Um, it does say they tend to keep to themselves and they prefer the companies of those who understand them instead of those who pass judgment. Don't we all? Uh, their base characteristic is charisma. They get a plus two to charisma. They are only about three feet tall and only about 30 pounds. And for 5e rules, they are considered small size. A lot of the other animals in here are considered medium um, but a luma is only small. So they only also have a walking speed of 25 feet. They also have the glide feature, just like we mentioned uh, with the last race. And what that is, is a reaction that will slow your fall and allow you to glide short distances. Now again, remember the birds in humble folk cannot actually fly. They can't flap their wings and fly around the world, um, their world, <laughs> they, uh, but they can glide. So again, that's a reaction, and it allows you to gently fall 60 feet per round and take no damage when you land. So that allows them to like come down out of the trees or you know off the sides of little huts or things like that and not get hurt at all with this glide feature. It does require that you're not carrying any heavy weapons, a shield, or any heavy armor that you cannot use the glide feature uh, while you have that on. Now, Luma's also get a really cool feature called wing flap. And that's as a bonus action, you can propel yourself upward a distance of half your movement. So again, remember this is not flying, but it's just at least being able to propel themselves upward enough to be able to like jump up on something. And with a Luma, if their speed is 25 feet, that means 12 feet, they'd be able to flap their wings as a bonus action. And propel themselves upward about 12 feet. So this is like instead of a jump, this is just an automatic bonus action wing flap. Whereas a jump, um, sometimes the DM will make you do like an athletics check or something to see if you make it. Uh, they also have a feature called touched, which is really cool. That actually allows them to know one cantrip from the sorcerer spell list and they use charisma as their spell casting ability. Um, they have another feature called faded, F-A-T-E-D, not faded, F-A-D-E-D, -E but fated, it is fate, um, which is that they always seem to know their way. What this is, is once per long rest, you can choose to re-roll any attack, skill check, or saving throw. That's pretty handy. I like that feature a lot. Now, there are two sub-races of Lumas. There's a Sable Luma and a Sarah Luma, which is spelled S-E-R-A, Sarah. Um, so first the Sable Luma, um, it says that they are often overlooked in the crowd in social situations. They do get a plus one to constitution and they have this really neat feature called hard to read. Now what hard to read is, is it gives others a disadvantage on insight checks against you. That can be pretty handy. 
and you have advantage on deception checks against any non-lumas. Really neat. I like that. Um, it's kind of like a other people can't seem to figure you out type of thing. Uh, they also have another feature called resilience. And I think resilience is something that in 5e a lot of different um, races have. But it, what it does is it gives you advantage on saving throws against poison and resistance to poison damage. That's pretty handy as well. Uh, the other one was a Sarah Luma. The subrace of Sarah it says that it's actually celebrated by those around you and you get a plus one to wisdom. Now, the really cool thing about Sarah Lumas is they have a really couple neat um, abilities here. One of them is called Center of Attention, which gives you proficiency in the performance skill. And Songbird, which is once per long rest, when you perform, you may cast Charm Person. I'm seeing that this might be really cute for bards with the Sarah Luma, having the whole songbird feature and the performance and everything. But with the original, um, what was it, plus, plus two to charisma, right? And then either the constitution or the wisdom one, depending on which sub race you pick. These are going to make really good bards, even paladins, sorcerers, or warlocks. Um, I could see the magic users because you already get the sorcerer cantrip as um, an automatic thing that you know there. Uh, but that is the Luma race out of the Humblewood campaign. Those little doves and pigeons and things like that. I love the idea of the iridescent feathers. What do you think, guys? Does this sound like a cool race to you? Is this something you think you would play if you were playing a Humblewood campaign? Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. So we're going to continue our series and we're going to go through all the races in the Humblewood campaign so you can decide if it's something that you would like to purchase and play or maybe one of your friends is running a Humblewood game that you'd like to play um, or even if you're trying to, you know you're playing one and you'd like to decide which race sounds like the best race for you. So make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any videos. Hit that notification bell so you know when the new ones are posted and go ahead and help us out and give us a thumbs up so that more friends can find us and hit that like button. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.